What is going on guys? This is Michael from GPRisers.com and today I'm going to go over which graphics card is the best to buy for cryptocurrency mining. To determine which graphics card um, currently is the best one to purchase for cryptocurrency mining, I used um, the prices that are available on StockX. Now, towards the beginning of 2021, I did purchase quite a lot of cards on StockX. As time went on, it seemed like prices kept going up and up. And right when the LHR models came out, um, the founders editions for these cards, which are full hash rate, uh, just completely skyrocketed in price. What we've noticed in the past couple of months as the crypto market has cooled down is that the founder edition cards have actually dropped substantially compared to other AIBs. So in this video, the prices that I have for these cards are going to be what the cards were last sold for on StockX at time of filming. Now to give an example of what I'm talking about in regards to AIBs and the Founder Edition cards, if you look over at eBay here, um, these are the uh, lowest price listings for the RTX 3080. And as you can see here, we have a lot of LHR. We have an EVGA here that is a Dash KL, that's an LHR model. We have a Zotac LHR. And as we go through here, a lot of these lower price cards are LHR. We do have a Founders Edition here, and this one is used for $1,300. And if you compare that over to StockX, uh, it's $5 more for a new one. However, StockX does have fees. I do believe it's about $50, bucks, um, plus maybe about $15 to $20 to ship. But with StockX, you also get you know the peace of mind on what card you're getting. Uh, you know it's not used. And for that little uh, price difference, I think that it's worth it. However, I am a big fan of used parts. If you've seen um, some of the other videos, we do buy used motherboards, processors, RAM, um, things of the like. And if the price on eBay was substantially lower, um, and by substantially, Substantially, maybe, you know, if I could save about $100 to $200 per graphics card, I would buy them used. But with the price difference being so close here, I would rather spend the extra couple bucks and get them new. But I'm just showing you guys eBay here to compare prices with StockX. And the analysis, again, that we're doing uh, in today's video to determine which graphics card is the best one to currently purchase, we are using the data for Founder Editions for the RTX NVIDIA line. Now, for AMD cards, we are comparing a um, XFX 60. 600 XT and on stock X that was around $530 and we will also be using a um, AMD brand um, their you know founders edition I guess you could say RX 6800 non XT the 6800 um, non XT came out to about $841 on stock X and these prices on stock X are in line with what we found um, you know in local markets here and on eBay um, eBay seems to be the most expensive out of all of them and for the hassle of dealing with some of the sellers um, you're not always sure of where the product came from or how they used it um, we tend to gravitate towards stock X especially when the prices are so comparable so before I go into all the data that we collected here uh, you know the hash per watt the hash per you know USD profit per day on each card payback periods and stuff like that I did want to mention real quick that everyone's situation is different and that is why we are going to analyze this from a couple different perspectives so as I'm going through each uh, card, I will kind of touch on, you know, my opinions on it and maybe why your situation would benefit from that card over a different card, you know, despite the numbers being a little bit better or worse. So that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So real quick, the hash rate for this is going to be for Ethereum. I do realize that some other, you know, algorithms might be more profitable, but the time of filming, um, even for, you know, the RTX 3070 Ti, the most profitable thing to mine is Ethereum. So that's what we are going to be basing this off of. So here again, as I said um, a couple moments ago, there are a lot of variables and each variable um, can be specific to your situation and why one card might be more advantageous to mine on for you than another. So out of all the cards that we have here, the best hash per watt, which means the most efficient card, is going to be the RTX 3060 Ti and the RTX 3070. Now, these two cards are identical when it comes to Ethereum mining. However, the price difference um, comes out to a little bit more for the RTX 3070. And if you look at the right, we have a payback period of 397 days for the 3060 Ti 
and a payback period of 423 days for the RTX 3070. So if you were to look at this data set, um, it is conclusive that the RTX 3060 Ti and the RTX 3070 are the most efficient cards. And the payback period out of all of the cards would be the quickest for the RTX 3060 Ti. Now, looking at this purely from a profit per day, um, you know, of course, the RTX 3090 is going to be the winner. The RTX 3090 pulls in about $3.84 a day after electricity. And with these electrical numbers, we are assuming $0.10 cents per kilowatt. Now, the RTX 3090 is the most inefficient card out of the non-LHR NVIDIA models, which is about 0.4 mega hash per watt. Now, the most inefficient card that we have on our data set here would be the RTX 3070 Ti. This card really only mines at around 59 mega hash. Um, I've seen them go up to 62, but um, right in our mining farm, at least, we are hovering on average around 59 at 200 watts. If you were to look at the RTX 3070 Ti for what mega hash you get per dollar, then technically it would outperform the RTX 3070, RTX 3060 Ti, and also the RTX 3080. Now, the reason for that is the RTX 3070 Ti, although it's a higher end model, is actually cheaper than the RTX 3070 and it performs relatively close to the same speed. But when you're looking at hash per dollar, it does not take into account the watts that are being pulled on the card. And as you can see here, the RTX 3070 Ti pulls around 200 watts in comparison to the RTX 3070, which pulls 125. So analyzing cards for hash per dollar is not the best route to go. I see a lot of um, you know online selling that goes on, and a lot of people do sell hash per dollar. And that usually is in bulk when people are selling you know 10 20 50 cards they'll sell them at say 14 dollars per hash however that might involve a lot of cards that are inefficient and so it's important to take into account hash per dollar but it's also important to analyze that on all these other um, variables and metrics so i don't want to rant too much about that um, you can see the data set here um, i'm sure you couple of you have already freeze framed it but I would take a look at this when trying to decide on which graphics card is best now if you're looking at this from a payback period then the RTX 3060 Ti uh, does win and also the RTX 3070 is close and also the RX 6800 from AMD um, is actually very good now some people are able to get the wattage down on this card um, however for us here at the team we are getting around 140 watts at 63 mega hash and that is on a good day i want to say amd does have many problems uh, we do have 6800s uh, 6800 xts we have a whole lot of 6600 xts and we've noticed that those are our problem rigs nvidia rigs are relatively fine except for thermal throttling but our thermal pads solved a majority of those issues it just does take a lot of time to repad one card at a time but we are slowly getting there now if you look at the payback period the worst card that you could get right now is the rtx 3080 Ti. Now, although I do believe that this card has potential down the line on other, you know, maybe core intensive algorithms, this does have a hard LHR block and it does perform fairly well. You know, 87 mega hash is, is a great number. However, it is pulling 280 watts. In comparison, you know, an RTX 3090 will hash at around 120 at 300 watts, but you could downclock that 3090 to around 280 watts and still get around 111, 112 uh, mega hash. And as I I said earlier um, no card is going to be the perfect card the one that you should go out and buy it always kind of comes down to your situation and for us here in the mining bunker um, the card that we are going to start um, accumulating is the RTX 3080 now this card right here has a payback period of 417 days which is longer than the RX 6800 but it comes with less headaches now the RTX 3080 does have a payback period of 417 days which is not as good as some of the other cards that you see up here however it is the second best in comparison to the RTX 3060 Ti so the payback period period is not as good as the RTX 3060 Ti. However, the hash per dollar is higher than the RTX 3060 Ti. And the hash per watt is not as efficient as the RTX 3060 Ti, but the hash rate overall is higher. So there are a bunch of different uh, variables here, different metrics. But for our specific situation, this is the card that we are going to be eyeing. And additionally, we will be looking at the RTX 3070s. And although the RTX 3070 has a longer payback period and it's slightly more expensive than the RTX 3060 Ti while having all of the same numbers. We always try to analyze what these cards
cards will be worth, you know, years from now. And it's comfortable to say that an RTX 3070 will be worth more than a 3060 Ti. And that is from a gaming standpoint. We do believe that the 3070 will depreciate less than a 3060 Ti. So that is why now currently we rather spend, you know, a couple more bucks um, getting the higher end model. And down the road when we do want to upgrade and sell off um, equipment a couple of years from now, you know, a 3070 will be worth more than a 3060 Ti. So here in the mining bunker, we have 240 volt. We have, uh, you know, power distribution units. We have a lot of power here available. However, a year ago when we were doing residential mining, we would probably not take into consideration the RTX 3080. And that is purely because they consume about 225 watts, which means you can really only com comfortably have about five of these on an outlet that's 120 volt, 15 amp. And even with five of them running, it will get warm over time. So when we were residentially mining, we would really look at how much hash we would get per watt more than anything else. Now that we're kind of mining in a commercial area, we are focusing more on consolidation and of course payback period. So again, all of this information is here for you guys. Uh, we already ran the numbers and again, this is as of filming this, which is March 8th, but I thought it would be good to release a video on this information because this is, um, you know, directly correlated with what we're going through right now. You know, we have a whole bunch of different cards and we're trying to figure out where we should expand, uh, where we should kind of contract. And we thought that this information would be beneficial to you guys so to kind of put short um the card that we do believe uh is best right now is the rtx 3080 followed very closely by the rtx 3070 but we'd love to hear what the community is doing now um it seems like things uh, change so you know drastically and fast in the crypto community and every day these this profit you know per day the payback period um all of these numbers that you see up here except for the hash rate in, in watts do change daily so let us know in the comments down below what you guys are doing. But for us here in the mining bunker, we are going to start, um, you know, maneuvering over into the RTX 3080 and some RTX 3070s. That's going to be everything for this video, guys. I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day and we'll see you guys next time.